Hello, Super Science! I am back again with our new lesson in science. So in our previous lesson, you learned about the electromagnetic spectrum. In that module, you have learned about the different family of magnetic waves or the different regions of the electromagnetic spectrum. And one of those regions that we are going to discuss further is about the visible light. Now, before we begin our discussion, Make sure that you have called the presence of our Lord through a short prayer so that you can understand clearly our lesson for today. So our lesson for today is all about light, specifically mirrors and lenses. This lesson is in grade 10, second quarter, module 4. And the most essential learning competency for this module is predict the qualitative characteristics of images formed by plane and curved mirrors and lenses. Now, this module will allow you to study and learn about the properties of visible light as it undergoes reflection and refraction and how images can be formed out of these properties. Now to start with our lesson, I want you to identify the object that I'm going to show you. Okay, so can you tell what is this? Yes, this is a simple mirror which we can usually see anywhere, inside our house, in the streets, in school, hospitals, and it's very common inside a lady's back, right? Now how do you see yourself in a mirror? How do you compare the way you look and the way your image look in front of a mirror? Can you explain how your image form in the mirror? This new lesson will help answer those questions. So to better understand our lesson for today, let us begin our discussion on reflection. When will my reflection show who I am no, not that one. Reflection is the bouncing of light rays when it hits the surface like a plain mirror. It's just like when you throw a ball on the ground and it bounces. But in this case, it is all about light rays. Plane mirrors are like this. They exhibit regular reflection where the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. All regular reflection is a reflection of smooth surfaces. All plane shiny surfaces exhibit this kind of reflection. On the other hand, irregular or diffused reflection illuminates shaded areas such as under the trees and inside the buildings. Irregular reflection is a reflection of rough surfaces. This is observed in objects with irregular surfaces like rocks and buildings. So, to elaborate further about what you have understand about regular and irregular reflection, let us answer these exercises. So, you're going to identify the object if it is a regular or irregular reflection. The first one. A bathroom mirror. Okay, very good. That is specular or regular reflection. Now what about this? It is a flat screen TV. Is it regular or irregular reflection? Yes, very good. That is regular or specular reflection. Now what about this one? Precious stone. A diamond. Is that A? Yes, that is irregular reflection or diffused reflection. What about this last? Car. Okay, that is an irregular or diffused reflection. Okay, very good. We can now identify the regular from the irregular reflection. Now this time, let us discuss the two laws of reflection. The first one, the angle of incident ray is equal to the angle of reflected ray. Okay, so that is the first law of reflection. Now let us define first the incident ray. What is an incident ray? Okay, 
incident ray is the ray of light approaching the mirror and the reflected ray is the ray of light which leaves the mirror okay so those are the incident ray and reflected ray okay now let us proceed to the second law of reflection the angle between the normal line and the reflected ray is the angle of reflection now what is a normal line Okay, normal line is an imaginary line that can be drawn perpendicular to the surface of the mirror, which is always in between the angle of incident and the angle of reflection. Now, this time, let us talk about the characteristic that is formed by plane mirrors. These are the image, orientation, location, and size, or the magnification. In a plane mirror, the image that you see in front of a plane mirror is virtual. The orientation in a plane mirror is seen laterally inverted. The image that is formed is of the same size and the same distance as the object. So if you are two feet away from the mirror, then the distance of your virtual image and the mirror is also two feet. In other words, the image and the object in the plane mirror has the same characteristics except that the image is seen laterally inverted. Now speaking of laterally inverted, lateral inversion is a phenomenon wherein what is left on the object appears to be the right on the mirror image. This is due to the direction of the light followed when it strikes a reflecting surface like a mirror. So that is why when you are in front of a mirror, your left hand appears to be the right hand. Now, the common thing that we usually observe and we have seen during this pandemic time, which is connected with the lateral inversion, is the ambulance. Okay? Today's current situation, we can always see ambulance in the streets due to the COVID patients that are increasing. Now, what have you observed the word in front of the ambulance? Yes, the word ambulance is written in a reverse manner so that the car in front of the ambulance can read easily the word on his mirror and so that he could give away for the ambulance to pass by. Now, to summarize, for plane mirrors, the type of image is virtual and is formed from behind. The image orientation is laterally inverted. The image is located at the same distance from the mirror at the object's distance. And the image form is of the same size as the object. Plane mirrors produce images that have a magnification of 1. In other words, the image and the object of plane mirrors have the same characteristics except that the image is seen laterally inverted and it is a virtual image. So that was all for plane mirrors. And the next session will be the curved mirrors. Now for our enrichment, I will give you this short video about the importance of mirrors in our daily lives. Mirrors are essential to every home. They help us in our daily lives. Though we rarely appreciate their usefulness, but from the moment we get up to the time we ready ourselves to sleep, we almost always seek for a mirror to take a look at ourselves. Mirrors reflect to us how we look, how clothes fit us, and how things fit in. People always love to know how things look good with them. It gives us a chance to appreciate and be thankful. One way in which science impacts in our everyday life is the use of mirrors, which we can spend hours a day in front of it. Mirrors are everywhere. We can see them everywhere we go. There are always mirrors present. Technologies nowadays mostly have mirrors. Vehicles, gadgets like cell phones, laptop, television, and most of the appliances at home even in the hospitals, mirrors play a big role in that industry. Dentists use mouth mirror to clearly see the tooth that is infected. Surgeons and 
most of the medical team are using it. Mirrors are very common in the medical facilities. There are clear mirrors, and then there are also tinted mirrors that serve as either classy decor or as a barrier for our privacy. So mirrors are part of our daily lives. Without them, we wouldn't even consciously recognize ourselves. So that's thanks to mirrors. So that's all for today. This is Teacher Jules, and thank you for listening.